welcome, Rachel. It's so, so nice to talk to you. Thank you for having me, Elena. I've been looking forward to this. Likewise, absolutely. So, um, Rachel, I want to just go ahead and dive in because I think you are a very interesting individual, not only because of the cool things you're doing for communication, which will touch base, but the fact that you were actually a professional gymnast uh, for many years, actually competing um, uh, for Canadian team. I, I remember, if I remember yep. correctly. Okay, mm -hmm. great. So, and then, so I'm really curious to hear that transition story in terms of how did you go from being a gymnast um, to then going and to creating the communication platform virtual sapiens that we're also here to talk about yeah so i mean it's definitely a story of reinvention um i was on the canadian national team as a rhythmic gymnast with the ribbon and the ball and all that jazz and then went from that career which is very short-lived uh, to a career dancing professionally with Boston Ballet. And I danced with the company there for 10 years. And so that was all about going up on stage, performing under pressure, connecting with an audience, using your body to express a whole range of different emotions and messages. Um, and that I did for 10 years, retired in 2016 because of an injury. And I was able to switch from that world to the world of professional relationship building when I started at Harvard in their fundraising office and very quickly realized that there were skills that I had honed as a dancer that were still very, very relevant to being able to connect as a professional and drive impact as a professional. So that was kind of the, uh, it was almost like the sharp contrast between my experience as a dancer and then walking into an office one day and being like, oh, like all of these things that I thought I would have to leave behind are actually still very relevant. Hmm. That's very interesting. And, um, and I mean, listen, I mean, sports in general um, give you so much uh, discipline, so much knowledge about your body as well. So I think you pay attention to certain things much deeper but it's really interesting that you were kind of able to make that connection when you went into work for harvard and this is actually how i came across your work is because i was watching a harvard business review video i believe where you have convinced me of all the things that i must do to change the way i communicate virtually and it just i was like oh my gosh i thought i was okay so anyway and i, I appreciate it and i was like i was like i have to i have to reach out to this girl like we have to have a conversation because i thought the, the the information you put out there was just brilliant but that's interesting mm -hmm. that you kind of made that connection and then so i'm curious so so, um, and then you started to look at it from a business perspective as well, because you then saw an opportunity where you're like, well, and this was pre-COVID, right? So, oh, yeah. you know, so this is way pre-COVID. So I'm curious what then kind of made you that push to say, I can develop a product. And I'm curious to hear about Virtual Sapiens a bit more and kind of what pushed you to develop that product and why at that time? Because I think this was, again, pre-COVID that all this happened. So curious to also hear about what happened post COVID and how all that might have accelerated some of these things that you were doing. Yeah, the work that I was doing initially, so I founded Choreography for Business. That was the first business that I founded after I retired. And that was all about in-person, live facilitation, one-on-one -on -one coaching or one-to-many workshops. I started facilitating with Ariel, which is a leadership presence company and Mobius executive leadership. So I was doing a lot of work in the field, so to speak. And, and it was all experiential and in-person. And I, of course, loved it because it reminded me of performing. Um, and while I was doing these in-person trainings, I, I love the in-person feel. But I, in the back of my mind, I was always thinking, you know, how could we scale this? Like, is there a way, because the, the trainings I was doing were reserved for upper level management, C-suite level executives. And I was like, what about everyone else? You know, the communication is a skill that everyone knows is essential if you want to progress as a professional, if you want to achieve your goals, you have to be aware of the way you show up and intentional in the way you communicate. And so that had just been this little thing in my mind that I was like, how could we figure out how to scale this in a way that makes it more accessible? And when COVID struck, you know, we, all of us overnight went to connecting virtually over video. 
And as I started doing these facilitations over video, you know, I noticed two things. I noticed that there is a very specific playground that we have to work with in the world of virtual connection, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's a different way we relate to our audience, whether it's an audience of one person, like in this conversation, or an audience of me speaking to thousands of people, it's still me in the lens, right? So that, that's interesting because it means there's a limited number of variables that we're really dealing with when it comes to giving feedback. And then the other thing I realized was, well, I'm not, an, I'm not a machine learning expert, but I know enough of what's out there to know that there's probably some way that we could have a machine detect a human and be able to detect these specific metrics and cues that I look for when I'm coaching so that we could mm. then introduce scale. And that's kind of what we're doing. Well, that's exactly what we're doing with virtual sapiens. Yeah. You know, I've never been more conscious about uh, about my my space and my environment than I am in this in this in this episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have never so, but uh, it's it's awesome because because it, it it is something that is so impactful and and I don't think that we were really ready to go digital many of us and I mean although I do presentations continuously and I feel quite comfortable but. I can imagine how somebody who is not as comfortable, I mean, it's uncomfortable for me sometimes to make, maintain all of these different things that we have to pay attention to when we're yeah. speaking on camera. But, um, and so I'm, I'm curious, so if you have like a story maybe of, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe you worked with somebody who was just really uncomfortable and how was that experience for them? Like, do, you know, other oh, yeah. small baby steps that people can take? Yeah, I remember one session and this might, this story might resonate with a few listeners because this individual I was speaking with is an incredible presenter, very comfortable as a facilitator in person. And yet when we switched to the virtual video world, she said herself, like, I feel like I'm a nine-year-old again. Like I, I don't know how to command authority. I don't know how to na navigate this group of squares who are all looking at me. I can't feel them. Mm -hmm. So we spent a bit of time, you know, understanding how you can make this experience feel more real for you first. And as a result of that, tune in more to the different really or the different experiences the other humans are having on the other side. Right. And so we worked on that and a lot of it comes down to setting yourself up, whether it's with a series of rituals you do before the call, uh, the way you prepare to enter a meeting, even though you may be sitting in the same remote office for your seven calls in a day, right? But mentally preparing yourself for the change. And then while you're in the meeting, really making sure you're continuing to stay engaged physically right? Because anyone can sit here and, you know, you're just talking and, you know, you're just letting your body kind of hang out as though it's not really part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And already the, the energy's dropped, right? right? And so how do you maintain an open posture? How do you use your gestures in a way that's aligned with your words? How do you connect with eye contact? Like those are all things that help you stay present and then help your audience engage with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if you've seen some of these um, articles recently, but of course, every, as we're kind of doing this virtually, a lot of um, a lot of talk about the benefit and also the struggle of having the camera on continuously. But what, how do you feel about that? Like, are you for or against? When is it okay to not have your camera on? Is it okay um, in in business meetings and in court and in, 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 let's say day to day work? Maybe business meetings. Yes. Although I have attended business meetings where person I've never met did not turn their camera on, <laughs> which was awkward <laughs> for well, all involved. Yeah. I mean, and you know, so it's interesting, like I would turn that back kind of to you. And like in that moment where you were having this meeting with someone you don't know, you are, you, I presume were on video and they weren't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's unsettling. It's unsettling. Yeah. It's unsettling because you are then wondering you know, why are they not on video? Are they not paying attention? Are they multitasking? Do they not value this time as much as I do? Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it may be a whole other reason, but it, it introduces this anxiety 
into a conversation that could otherwise be very open and engaging. Yeah. Um, but in, in terms of your earlier question, I think that one of the biggest needs right now in this new world of hybrid work, right? Some of us are coming back in person, maybe it's two mm. days a week, maybe the company's gone completely remote. Um, we need, as, as leaders, we need to set very, very clear protocols, expectations, best practices around video etiquette, right? These are the meetings where turning on your video is completely up to you, right? The big company-wide updates where there are hundreds of people on the Zoom, you know, we would love to have you turn your video on so we can see you, but we understand that it's like, there's a lot of video. So if you're not actively speaking, go ahead and keep your video off. Um, or, you know, during these small team meetings where we're sharing documents and doing lots of work collaboratively, we can go ahead and just do audio only because we'll be looking at our screens the whole time. Um, but then having a policy of any meeting where you are with an external client, video on, background set up, good lighting, good framing, engaged as though you were in their office or welcoming, welcoming them into yours, uh, right? So really setting those expectations in stone. I do not think at all that all videos should be, uh, or all meetings should be video. I think that that is exhausting. Uh, just in the same way that I, I don't think, even before COVID, you know, I didn't, I don't think that all meetings needed to be meetings, <laughs> Absolutely. right? It's not like we, it's not like we were amazing at meetings before COVID happened, <laughs> but we have an opportunity now to redefine some of that. Yeah. Um, so uh, actually now what I'm doing is whenever somebody shows up, so whether it's, I don't know, uh, a company we're already working with, or maybe somebody I haven't met or whatever, whoever it may be, and if I feel like this is a meeting, I need them to have their camera on. What I usually do now is like, oh, can you hear me? Can you see me? Oh, I can't see you. I wonder if it's, is it my camera? <laughs> so I start playing this game. Like, so they yeah. can be like, oh, do you? And it works. Actually, it works. Like when I, I'm like, oh, I can't see you. Can you see me? And, and so they're like, oh, oh. And so it, without me asking them like, hey, yeah, are you going to okay. turn your camera on? So it works every single time, by the way. Like, you know, that's it, amazing. It, so and they actually they actually they respond in some way so either way they're like oh i'm not ready and i'm like well you should be ready but anyway different story right but yeah. or, or they say oh, okay yeah let me turn my camera on i've actually yeah. had somebody say yeah i just need to turn my it's during the day and he said no okay let me just turn my light on um and and i just need to comb my hair <laughs> so like and then because right. he had like blackout curtains in his office for some reason and maybe he likes to work in the dark i don't know yeah. i don't know but yeah yeah um, but it works quite well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So to, to kind of ask, so I'm, um, I wanted to also ask you, so uh, in terms of like, what do you feel is the biggest struggle for people when they get in front of the camera? Do, is it, is it the posture? Is it the eye contact? Like, what do you see mm. as the biggest kind of thing that you're like, okay, you spot on, this is what you need to work on. Is it the background? I don't know. What is it? Yeah, so definitely I'm still seeing a lot of setups that are not helpful to the speaker, right? So whether you're improperly framed, so even if you were using gestures, we wouldn't see them. I'm still seeing a lot of poor lighting. Um, you know, backgrounds, I think, I'm a little more lenient on backgrounds so long as they're not distracting. Right. Mm -hmm. But I will say that I, I really don't like virtual backgrounds. I would much okay. rather see like a real blank wall or a real bookcase, even if it's a little messy, than a virtual background where, you know, you're kind of moving <laughs> in and out of it like an alien. Yeah. I, just, I can't handle that. So, but I see a lot of setup, like pretty low hanging fruit, mm -hmm. right? Where you change it once and then you're set up for success. You don't have to worry about it. Um, you know, you can always show up and look professional and crisp and clear. Um, and then from more of a body language perspective, you know, I do see, I do see just a general lack of awareness, right? And a lot of that comes down to where do I look? And, you know, how far away should I be so that you can see my gestures and my posture and all that jazz? Yeah. 
Um, and I'm also, so I, I wanna, really want to know, and I want the audience to learn a little bit more about virtual sapiens, because I think it's awesome what you're doing. And I really think it's uh, just by making it accessible for people, I think it's going to change the game for a lot of people in the digital, and especially those that are working remotely or just even doing presentations. But before we go into that, I want to ask you about you as, as you as a, on this entrepreneurial journey. So because it's not easy, it's not easy. Um, and you're kind of juggling different different things as well. Um, now I, I know you're kind of more focused on virtual sapiens, but I believe there was a time when, especially in the, that transition time when you were doing different things. So when it comes down to that, what are some routines or habits that you have that help you um, maintain kind of the roller coaster, as I call it, the roller coaster of entrepreneurship and especially building a product, which is- uh, Yeah. Oh man, okay. It, I mean, as you know, it really is a roller coaster. And I do wish that this whole, there's a little bit of a romanticized narrative that exists around being a tech startup entrepreneur. You know, you mm -hmm. hear these stories of you know, how exciting and, you know, how it makes you feel so alive. And, and it's all, that's true. But it's just honestly, at least for me, on a daily basis, there's like a huge moment of this is the most amazing thing ever and then a moment of total doubt and like just uncertainty you know you're you're dealing with such a new path whether it's a new technology or a new way of doing something that's been done one way for years and um you know, not everyone thinks it's the best idea in the world and you have to know how to deal with that kind of rejection at the same time as taking people who are true champions of your work you, and not allowing that to become bigger than it really needs to be either. So it's this constant balancing act. And I think obviously my experience as a dancer was really helpful in preparing me for this because every night you go out on stage and you dance your heart out and then you walk off stage and you get a whole list of things you could have done better. Um, and so I'm, I'm no stranger to feedback and criticism, but you know, it feels like your baby and you, you just want people to love and support it all the time. <laughs> That's not <laughs> always the case. Yes, absolutely. Are there some things that you do like in your routines that help you maintain that, except, you know, of course, I yeah. think that being disciplined from the sports background mm -hmm. probably has a lot to do with it, but just, is there anything, any routines that you follow? Yes. And that's a great question because it's, I think it's especially hard in the virtual world, right? So myself and my co-founder, actually our whole team is built remote, remotely, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll maintain that culture uh, because it works really well for us, but that means that we're not ever in the same room. Um, so we're always co connecting virtually. And so I've had to be very strict with creating a structure for myself that helps me stay grounded and helps me maintain a perspective that keeps me in check, right? So for example, every morning I, I like wake up at the same time, even though I could just keep snoozing for hours if I didn't have any meetings wake up at the same time, you know, I get up, I have some hot, hot water and lemon, I go Love for it. a walk, right? I, I have to have to get my body moving. And then I usually do just a very, very short, like journal entry. Um, and for me, what works is just a quick check-in of like, where are we this week? You know, is there anything that's like really keeping us up at night? What can we get down on paper so it's not just in your head? Um, and I think importantly, just being like, you know, not that long ago, we took this leap to start this endeavor and look at all of the things that we've been able to put together in a very short amount of time, you know, and just keeping yourself in check so that when you start having these slightly unrealistic expectations often caused by this crazy amount of pressure that you see, you know, you see other people doing things yeah. in a different way, maybe faster. And, and it, yeah. can hard to forget. <laughs> it can be hard to remember your story. Yeah, no, it's definitely relatable. I think for many entrepreneurs, I, I interview a lot of entrepreneurs on this podcast, as I mentioned to you earlier, and it's, it, it really is. It's um, it, it, and I feel like mental health of an entrepreneur is not talked about enough because it is so romanticized as you said 
and nobody taught very rarely do we hear you know about <laughs> failures and mental breakdowns and that roller coaster because it's it is continuously and that's why i always ask about routines because uh, I think yeah. that's what keeps you sane, um, not just as an entrepreneur, but just any professional or any person that has to live in this day and age of, or, you know, of just yeah. bombarding of information and overwhelmingness of just how the world operates. But, and, um, and I think it's not talked about enough. So, and, and it's these small things that really make a difference. You know, it's just that consistency, that discipline to wake up every morning, even if you could sleep in, um, and, and those small habits that really kind of drive it forward and that that's what I, I i hear over and over again from entrepreneurs um but yeah so and it's uh, it's it, I, that, that should be that should be a conversation on its own as well i think we don't talk mm -hmm. enough about you know just the 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 mental aspect of being an entrepreneur so yeah. yeah um and i'm curious as well when um i mean when you started so how long has it been now how long has um how long have you been in this journey with um uh, virtual sapiens so with virtual sapiens i founded the company myself uh september 25th of 2020 mm -hmm. and my co-founder came on board in may so i kind of did a solo founder bit and then realized you know because it's such a technical product i really do need someone as a partner mm -hmm. on, on that side. And, um, and so we really, really took off in May. Yeah, that's great. And, and so that brings me to talk a little bit about virtual sapiens. Um, can you tell us a little bit more specific, like kind of uh, how it works? What is it, whatever you can share, of course, because I know you, you've done a lot of different things since we initially had this conversation back in 2020. And there's been a lot of development and I'm curious to just hear it. And I think the audience would be really curious. And and also if, if somebody can, how, how do we join? How do we get access to it? Because <laughs> I think it's yeah, super helpful. Totally, totally. So yeah, the product that we are most excited about that we are just about to launch is called The Sidekick. And we've built it to be to basically like if I were to say, Elena, I'm going to give you a little like friendly sidekick or coach who's going to just be on your shoulder when you when you need it to help remind you of the different communication cues that you're working on that you're trying to improve. Um, you can have this little guy here before a call or before a presentation or a pitch where you just want to run it through and you want to get some feedback, you want to make sure you're presenting and delivering well, it can be there live during the call. If you want to see what it feels like or catch yourself when you're doing behaviors that you know aren't really helpful or conducive to good communication, and then it gives you feedback as uh, a report after mm -hmm. any practice or real live event. Um, and so we built it as a Chrome extension. So it's, you don't need to download a new desktop application. Um, it integrates with your calendar. So it'll pull any video meeting that you have that day. Um, so you can actually like really helpfully see any upcoming video calls you have with the mm -hmm. Chrome extension. Yeah. Um, and then it'll auto launch with your video call. So let's say you have a Zoom presentation coming up and you wanna have these helpful reminders because it's really important for you to send a message of confidence and authority. Uh, so virtual sapiens would pop up with your Zoom. It would float right on top of it um, and you can move it around to wherever you would prefer to have it. And then throughout the call, it will give you little gentle nudges. If for example, you've been really animatedly and excitedly talking to someone who's in that lower part of your screen and, yeah. and you haven't been presenting to the lens, it right? Will, it or, will nudge you to be like, oh, here, we're here. Right? Yeah, <laughs> right, right. It will give you like a little eye, an eye contact kind of nudge symbol. Oh. It's all symbols because yeah. um, we don't want people to feel like they have to read anything. Of course. Um, yeah. Or if you're if you're the one who's speaking and you haven't used gestures in a certain amount of time, right? We'll remind you to use your gestures or remind you to keep your facial expressions dynamic. Um, yeah, right now we have six cues and it helps with your framing and lighting and all that jazz. Wow, that's impressive. That's really exciting. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> taken it up a notch from the last time you and I had this conversation, but I oh, love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely. Yeah, it's I love it. I listen. I mean, listen, the power of just technology, AI, machine learning. I mean, it's, uh, 
I don't, I'm, I'm also, I'm not a technical person. So although I have an ed tech startup, but that's, that's where my <laughs> business partner is for. He's the tech guy, but, but I'm continuously impressed uh, with that. So, and I, I really think, well, let me, let me, let me not tell you what I think because uh, it might not be fair, but I'm curious, um, what is your aspir like, what are you hoping this will do to um, the, the world of virtual communications? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, our vision for virtual sapiens in this new future of work is giving professionals access to quality communication training. So again, whereas previously you had to either have access to a sizable professional development budget to even get access to that pretty personal feedback, now you'll be able to get it for a pretty reasonable per month cost. Um, and giving people the tools to practice communication as a real skill, as opposed to the one-off, like, oh, we had this workshop once and this lady came in and she was lovely and she told us all these things we have to think about. And then you go into your next meeting and you're like, everything goes out the door. You know, we mm -hmm. want to build new habits in a way that has you know, been proven to actually rewire behaviors, right? Mm -hmm. So reminding someone while they're in the act that that's not, the, that's not the correct way to relate to a video, giving people those helpful nudges so they can actually rewire, rewire their communication skills to something that's more conducive over video. Yeah, no, and, and that, that I think that the, 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 the sidekick, the buddy, the buddy kind of yeah. system, right, that you have this, this right there. Um, because that's where it's at. It's, it's, that's where, I mean, that's also where the, the, the coaching piece comes in. So in this case, it's the virtual kind of AI coaching, yeah. right? But, but that's why it's so powerful because it's individualized. It's for you. It's specific on your yes. behaviors. Exactly. So it's not this general kind of where you go on YouTube and you're like, okay, how can I be, be, be a better presenter? It actually, you actually in practice every time you present. And what I love about it as well is for people that are a little bit more shy or introverted or just simply haven't had experience on in virtual communication, I imagine yeah. they can also run like, you know, fake Zoom meetings and have have the sidekick evaluate them and they can just do it as a practice, right? Before, like they don't have to be, in a, it, as long as it's Zoom launching, they don't need to have other participants, right? They could use mm -hmm. it like as a practice. Yeah, exactly. They, uh, it's basically like that part of it, we like to call the mirror, you know, because yeah. Typically, people would just practice their speech in front of a mirror. Yeah. Okay, um, so yeah. the sidekick can be your much more dynamic, active mirror to practice something. Exactly. And um, and this so you are you you guys opening this up to individuals or just corporations, or individuals and corporations or B two C? Yeah. So we're focusing on B two B. So we're really looking for teams to kick the tires on this. That being said, the way we've built it is also open for B two C. Um, and you know, the best way to get access is to just sign up for our early access, uh, wait list, which is on our website. Yeah. And yeah, I'm definitely going to include the website all in the description. So everybody will have yeah, access yeah. to it. We're definitely signing up, uh, Bester and Bester are huge fans of virtual sapiens. So we have yes, this, Yvonne is going to be super excited about it. So yeah. uh, we, we definitely, we, we have looked into communication we've done a communication training kind of this was pre-covid like a very traditional one you know to to look how we can because we deliver together so we deliver mm. uh, uh together oh i'm curious about that is there any is it more an individual or do you think this could be valuable for like two percent like like for ivan and i because we're co-presenters in many cases does that work for mm. that or is it only for would it so the sidekick is set like if there were two people in a, in the same screen, right. mm -hmm. that would completely, they would be very confused. It's really yeah. designed for one person per screen. Yeah. Um, that being said, I wouldn't recommend anyone do a virtual presentation, unless it's TV. Like with a, with a laptop camera, I would really only recommend one person per mm -hmm. lens anyways. Yeah. Um, but if you're wondering about kind of the, the cadence and the speaker share, um, so long as you both have a sidekick, it would work Oh yeah, because then it just, just depends on who is speaking, right? So it's the same exactly. thing, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I like that. Yeah. Nice. Um, what else? Um, what else do you feel is powerful about this tool? I guess as we, especially, I mean, how has COVID? I mean, I know COVID's probably accelerated quite a bit, but what else do you feel yeah. is so powerful about this? I, I think the potential is what's most powerful. I think that we have 
this whole new channel of connecting and with it comes challenges, absolutely, but also all of this opportunity, all of this new data and this ability to basically have technology help us facilitate meetings in a way that's actually very difficult to do in person, right? You can get insights on the way you're showing up. You can get insights on the way your audience is reacting, right? Ultimate, right now we're focused just on the user, but eventually we'll, we'll start getting some data from the audience and be able to tell how engaged an audience is. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, you can't always see everyone on a virtual meeting, even though everyone potentially has the square, right? And it can be difficult as a presenter to feel the room. So how can we help a presenter feel more connected? Mm -hmm. um, so there's just like a whole world of opportunity and it's all moving very quickly and evolving very quickly. So yeah. I think, you know, this is just the very beginning. Yeah, and I, I think that it's, um, it's it's definitely the right time for it. And also with, I remember when my, one of my friends is a teacher and she was really struggling on just on just having that engagement with, with, with her students. Um, and same for, I mean, for schools and university students, I think it's just presence and being able to engage an audience wherever they are is essential. And um, yeah, so it's, uh, this is definitely the right time. And that's, that, that, that's the future, as you said, and whether we like it or not, it's happening and uh, the world's <laughs> going to become more and more remote. This is going to be more and more normal. Um, yeah. And it's, uh, it's just a matter of time. And I think having that presence, I mean, just from somebody like myself who does a lot of these engagements online, mm -hmm. it's, it's a powerful tool. And uh, I can see this beneficial for any, any, anybody really, but particularly, especially management who then mm -hmm. need to kind of navigate that environment with their teams and really learn to connect um, yeah. and establish that rapport, I think, and just lead by example. I think it's, I really think it's a powerful tool and I'm, I'm really excited for you and I'm really excited what it's going to take, take off to. And um, I, I think we're going to be hearing about virtual sapiens, by the way, I love the name. Virtual sapiens. I love okay. it. <laughs> love it. Like really virtual. Like uh, what, what, what can you, there's no, like I, it could not be named anything but a virtual sapiens. I love it. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah, good. Sapiens. Well, it's awesome. It's very catchy. Yeah. Very catchy. So where can people find you? Um, what, are you on social media? Do you have a company page, maybe on LinkedIn or anywhere else? Or where do you guys? Yes. Yep. So we're on LinkedIn, virtual sapiens. We are on Instagram, the sapiens underscore AI. We're on Twitter. Um, and then you can also, of course, find us at our website, which is www.virtualsapiens.co. Nice. Nice. Looking forward to seeing what's to come. And thank you for joining today. Yes. Well, thanks for your uh, wonderful and relevant questions, Elena. Mm -hmm.